Hi, gang. I was going to do a book club. I'll show off one book. It is a nice, efficient copy of the Bible for like $2. It's an extra copy. Oh, I got other cool stuff, too. Actually, I can show you a little sneak peek. I did have it ready, but I'm going to go. Like, this is like a pocket version of like the Book of, book of John, right? It's just like Book of John. But it's like a dollar or whatever. <laughs> like, good deal. And then I have, look, probably ain't. I got another Bible. Because this one's like fancier with like case or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Can't really see it. Bad camera work. Bam. More of an editor. But no, I know how to point a camera. It's not that. But I just choose not to. Excuse me. This is all folded. Bothers me. This is like new. It shouldn't be all crinkled up. Anyway. So I figured I'm going to do John, right? But no, I'm not going to do John. But it does start with a J, right? We read... We read James. This is a real quick one. I'm not really going to preface it with too much. I talked a little bit about it in the podcast before. This is the epistle of Jude. Now, really, it's the epistle of Judas because that's his name. Uh, he is the brother of Jesus. There were two apostles named Judas, and then Jesus had a brother named Jesus. No, Jesus had a brother named Judas. And two apostles named Judas, because it was an incredibly popular name, especially after, like, the Maccabees thing. So, uh, but then, you know, lo and behold, like, he's going to go with Jude for, like, the name of the epistle. You know, he's, he's just, you know, he's not going to do Timmy. He'll do Tim or whatever. You know? <laughs> they don't, they don't like Judas or whatever. <laughs> They, they get, like, even he doesn't, he agrees. Oh, yeah, it's Jude. <laughs> so, but that's that's who this one is. And he has a near identical greeting as James, his brother, does with respect to how he, uh, but he even adds another adjective or verb, I guess it is, the word preserved, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll start over, but this is a very quick one. It's one chapter, and it's intense because it is the last, what I call the last useful book of the Bible. Because booky revelation, and I'm not trying to take away words from it or say there's nothing to it. That ain't it. It is one big vision of your, you and I are not really qualified to decipher such things like, absolutely you know you know like you could with certain other ones because it's weird and like overtly some of it is for these these people at this current time all the like apostles are persuaded to like one level or another that like they're in end times like imminently like paul seems to think like maybe not too imminently and like he even clears it up because he he worried them too much the other way in the first letter whether it was Thessalonians or uh, Corinthians or what, one of them. I think it might have actually been the Thessalonians. But um, it's one of the ones where there's a second one. It's not Second Timothy. It's one of the other ones. Anyway, so this is Jude, and we're just going to get into it. And Peter rooks like a, a little bit of this off in his second letter. Um like a couple paragraphs. He just he doesn't totally transcribe it, but he basically does and like uses slightly different adjectives for some words. Uh because it was a mighty letter. This is all you have at Jesus' one brother. You see how savvy James is. He's concerned with wisdom. He's James the Just. He's like an elder of the Christian church. He's like he's like front and center in the book of Acts. Jude is like nowhere to be found, actually. But yet, like, obviously he's around about it and has a lot of authority being Jesus' brother. So, uh, here we go. This one's not quite so much concerned with wisdom. This is more like like the book of, like, the, the letters from, like, John, where they're, like, ruthless and they're, like, unabashed, unapologetic. Like, if you say you love God but you don't, you don't do it, you don't help people, you don't actually abide in it, you're not a Christian. You're an anti-Christian. They they came though they came up with us, they are not like of us. 
he seems to be pointing out there's a spirit of Antichrist already present even then, and he like he's not talking about like humans or whatever. He's saying there are many Antichrists, many people, but because there's a spirit and like, you know, test spirits and all this weird stuff, like who can say? I I stick with I don't see like he's warning you, you know. All right, so that's your intro, five and a half minutes, and let's just get into it. The Epistle of Jude. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy. Peace and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh and, yep, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, what do you suppose we mean by strange flesh? It only means one thing when it's strange, my friend. If you've ever read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were not even content to have, like, lots of virgin daughters. They wanted to rape the angels that were there about it because they do their mining or whatever. They kind of do they, they, they Whatever it is, I think they rediscovered the joys of strange flesh. They say it means homeless. It doesn't. No, that's not that one. No, no. No, it's like the Sodom and Gomorrah strange flesh. Actually. They're nuts. They are crazy people. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, these very strangers, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet, Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Again, yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know, naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. And all right. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, 
have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, against God, Lord. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. Now you might say, I don't know, he means Lord, and I don't like his brother, like, you know, Lord Jesus, or whatever, but because he has identified who he means by Lord. As I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And he's a Jew, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, brother of James, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. He does refer to both as Lord, but he always says, like, uh, deny the only Lord God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. Now they reason, that means it's the same. Uh, it's the same thing that they say about James. In verse 4 here, sorry to jump around. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness. And deny the only Lord God. And our Lord Jesus Christ. They deny God and Jesus. But they were, no, oh, warned God and warned him, like the same guy. He's very clear it's not. <laughs> he, he would, Jesus would have covered that with. <laughs> he would have known, hey, wait a minute, you're Jesus. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're like the brother, right? <laughs> you know, like, and there's even stories, yeah, like they weren't totally persuaded, like, at some point, and like, <laughs> Even if they, like, get it, like, they don't really, like, you know, well, you still got to come eat or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Use the force, gauge which is more appropriate. What type of person are they? Are they a total Palpatine or are they like uh, just doing all right? And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now Jude knows darn well what he means by saving. 
You can lead the horse to water, but one cannot make it drink. We don't save people. They save themselves when they come to a point. It's kind of like getting off drugs or whatever. He knows what he means and what he doesn't mean. But you like scorecards and like, could you just raise your hand, please? But then that's it. You're done. Don't have the help. Oh. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. That is the book of Jude. And it is very much, if you notice, with respect to James and Jude, they go out of the way in theirs to praise God and not so much Jesus. Because Jesus probably beat that into them because they have something in common when you read it that like even the other guys, like they do that too. They all give glory to God first and foremost, but not quite the same as Jude or even James. Because that's how he ends his benediction. He doesn't mention Jesus once in the, in, the, in the end bit. The last time you hear Jesus would be verse 20. So I'll read 20 to 25 again, okay? But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Hey, you know who else said that? Jesus. He's even quoted saying, why do you say I'm good? Only God is good. Don't say that. It's in there. And like, it's, it's specifically because he's Jesus's brother. He knows about this stuff. He knows what might happen to these people if they get on father's bad side for too long. He even perfectly understands what's going to happen to like some of these like freaks. You know, like the anti-Christian, like grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Like, but they're and they're so Christian, but not, not once like they don't have anything in common with anything to do. I mean, so of course, like Jude's worried about it, just like a lot of them are worried about it. I mean, these even insists they 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 better be worried about it. <laughs> Um, but you know, that's about it. John puts it, uh, John's very like tough in first John, but the bottom line of first John that you can take away to the bank is just, it's, it's basically this sentence is the microcosm for the whole letter, in my opinion, which is, uh, now by this, we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. <laughs> so at any rate. And there's a bunch of antichrists or whatever. There's a spirit of antichrist, a spirit of error, and there's all kinds of stuff. And the Essenes just like, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff with, with John and the Essenes, apparently, that you can just, you can just tell. <laughs> anyway, have a very, uh, have a very good day. And not, maybe not all the Essenes, maybe some of them were Christian, but like a lot of them were like, wait a minute, they were butting heads with John himself, who is Jesus' apostle, who walked around with them, but they know better because like the Matrix or something, right? <laughs> yeah, so he just said, you know, uh, this has trouble written all over. And sure enough, not that long after, I mean, these same people instigated like, you know, the, like 
the revolt. The re- re- <laughs> anyway, have a very, very uh, nice uh, December 26th. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Day after Christmas. This is the second day of Christmas. Uh, there are 12 days. It goes right on up to the 5th. But this year, you might have a bonus one. You know, it might be like the, the 12 days of Christmas. and then, But it's also like the 16 days of wow. Now that goes up to the ninth, and then blessed is a person who can like get to the tenth or something. <laughs> Anywho, something like that. Well, have a nice day. But you'd have to go back to Daniel for that. And then there's chapter two of Daniel. How in the la- you saw a vision of the latter days where a rock hits the feet that's stomping all over the earth. So it's implied it has to wait for that to happen to destroy it. So again, yes, that part like. That's just war. You know what I mean? Like, that will be fulfilled. It won't tarry, but like, here he fulfilled everything whatsoever, like the human could ever ask for. This is just Yahweh's going to punish you because look what you're doing about it. So please forgive us if you happen to be a different faith or like, you know, if they're annoying or they're worried about you. Why are you going to, or whatever, like, yeah, you don't. I mean, even Larry King was an atheist who sort of at least publicly said, you know what, like, why do you, why do you care? Like, wouldn't you, if you thought that though, like, why are you offended by that? Like, you know, like they're just looking out for you. They're worried about it. Right. You got to be nice. Right? Even if you're not like, why does it bother you so much that like, and I don't think they're judging you. I think they're scared. You're going to go, you know, even if we disagree, it's silly. Like I don't hold it against them. <laughs> I would want them to say that to me. He was fair enough about that. But like, you know, again, like, well, fair enough. Please, like, you agree there's a separation of church and state, right? You agree it doesn't doesn't matter what I owe about, like, the church with respect to the laws of land. But yet, like, if you should be found to be breaking laws of land while pretending you're not doing that, and you don't know, like, about crazy stuff, right? I mean, that is a state matter. Oh, yeah. We live in America, and it is a state matter. So let's just make peace, and, you know, because you're down by law, and you know it. But, like, we didn't all do that. Make distinction. And even for those ones, I would tell them, please jump ship. See, there's the Bismarck. You've heard of the Britannic and the Titanic. Well, there's the Satanic. You know, the Bismarck. And that sank on its maiden voyage, too. You know, the Satanic or whatever. You know, the Titanic or the Bismarck. Was it the Bismarck? It was the Bismarck. Fine. Shoot. Fine. Fine. Like, snap the time and flood them all. I mean, yep. Right on up till the end. That's that's the microcosm. That's the one I bet Father picked for like this whole like your dragnet or whatever, yo. We got the PayPal collusion and the computers and the lying and the schemes and we've got our dragnet. Who shall escape them? <laughs> but like you know, you try to outwit like just censor it because we don't want people to know what like Yahweh said about this time. Maybe like if it was like it's the latter days one. There's no doubt about it. Look what you're doing, you idiot. Anyway, have a good day.